Hey guys, welcome back. So, the last six years I have been using Premiere Pro and the last two months I have been trying out Final Cut to see is it a better program for my workflow and is it gonna be more cost effective and happiness effective long term for me. So, I'm sure you know what's coming next. The last couple months I have been scouring YouTube for all the tutorials on how to do every single thing in Final Cut Pro and it's taken so much time. <laughs> I'm pretty good at simplifying things and making them easy to understand so I wanted to do that for you guys for if you're starting out with Final Cut Pro especially if you're coming from Premiere. So we're gonna get into how to start a project all the way to how to export it and everything in the middle including some cool keyboard shortcuts i've figured out along the way so before we jump into that i just wanted to say thank you guys so much for being here i really really appreciate y'all's support and i hope this video is helpful so thanks for joining let's get into it All right, so if you're coming from Premiere, here's a few things that will help make everything make more sense up front. Instead of being called a project file, it's gonna be called your library. Your bins are gonna be called events now. Instead of creating a new sequence to make a timeline, you're gonna be creating a project. All right, so now let's start up our project. When you open up Final Cut, this screen will show up and all you have to do is click New and then choose the location that you want to save your project file at. I like to have my footage and everything for a project organized before I get it into an editing program in subfolders. Uh, it just makes things easier to find later and speeds up my process a little bit. So I always just have a subfolder for the project called Final Cut files. I like to work this way on external hard drives because you can always pull it up later in the future or if you're working on different computers or sending your files back and forth to coworkers or something like that on a project. Uh, it's just super easy to access and find stuff quickly. So we just need to select our location and then hit save and we're ready to get started. All right, so we're in Final Cut. So now let's do a quick overview of the layout so that you know where things are. Okay, so right in the middle at the top, you've got your playback monitor. This is where your video is gonna play back while you're editing anything that's on your timeline. Next, we've got the effects control area on the top right. And this is where we can quickly access color grading, effects adjustments, scaling and rotation, text adjustments for titles and stuff like that, and all that stuff up here. Okay, next we've got our media access area which we're gonna be working in first, uh, top left. This is where our imported footage is gonna go in a second and you can find your custom titles and lower thirds and stuff like that up here. And you can even import your music library if you're gonna be using that on a regular basis from project to project up here. Okay, and then the last thing which is pretty unique is on the bottom right, next to where your timeline is gonna be, you can change your timeline appearance, you can access the effects browser, and you can change your playback settings all down here. Super easy to find, and you can minimize it when you're not using it to where your timeline shows up full screen, which is pretty cool. So real quick, if you're liking this video, make sure to subscribe real quick, hit the like button, maybe leave a comment what you're thinking so far. We're trying to grow the channel so we can do bigger, more exciting, and more helpful things. So any support from you guys really, really helps and really means a lot. Anyways, back to the video. All right, so now we know how to navigate the interface and we're gonna go ahead and get started importing our footage. So go ahead and find your project title or library title in the top left, click it, and then you can either import all your footage right away here, or if you're doing subfolders like I do, you can go ahead and make those right now before importing. So all you do to make your bins or subfolders is select the title and then right click create event. And this is where I'll separate my talking footage, my B-roll, product B-roll, or if I'm doing a project where it's like interior, exterior, different days or something like that, that's how I keep it organized here. And that's it, so instead of 
dropping all your footage from your computer into the main bin, you just drop it into these subfolders instead, and it makes it easier to find B-roll and stuff like that later on while you're editing. Bonus tip, if your computer is really slow, you can go ahead and create proxy files, which are low res copies to use while editing right here while you're importing, which will speed up your playback and editing and make it a lot happier experience. <laughs> so next we're gonna start setting up our timeline so we can drag our footage onto there and get things going. So on the bottom of the screen, you see it says new project and this is where your timeline is gonna be. So all you have to do is click where it says new project, type in your project name, whatever you want your exported file to be called and double check to make sure your frame rate and resolution are what you like. I always use 23.98p and either 1080p or 4K depending on what type of project it is or what cameras I was using. So we're gonna click OK and now we can start adding footage to our timelines. So before we start adding things to the timeline, you need to understand a couple of things that are unique to Final Cut to help make this a little bit easier. Otherwise it can start getting really frustrating, and confusing, like whenever I jumped into it, I had no idea what I was doing wrong and I just felt stuck. <laughs> so Final Cut has what they call a magnetic timeline. And basically when you're dragging and dropping stuff onto it, it snaps it all together without any gaps or anything. And that helps keep things from overlapping and it moves with you as you adjust your footage while you're editing and overall it just makes some parts of your editing a little more simple and streamlined. So for the times where you don't want to be using the magnetic timeline you can actually bypass it super easily. So in order to do that, we're gonna be using what's called the position shortcut. And all you do is you literally just click P on your keyboard and you can go on dragging and dropping your footage anywhere or your music or titles or whatever, uh, super easy. This will just give you a little bit more breathing room while you're editing. And I really like to do this. All right, so now that we know how to move our clips around, I'll show you how to start cutting them up if you're editing to a beat, cutting up interviews, or whatever you need to do. Okay, so especially for B-roll, I like to start out by cutting my footage before I even drop it into the timeline. So here's what I do. I just find my footage in the event tab, top left, and scrub over it with my mouse. You can just quickly see a preview of where you're at in the footage, and you just type I to designate your in point, and O to designate your out point. Once you do this, you'll see that it's like kind of highlighted and when you drag and drop it onto your timeline, that's all that's coming with you. It's not gonna be this whole long clip. So a lot of times, unless it's like talking footage or something, I like to go in and do this to all of my clips so that working on my timeline is just a little bit easier and streamlined. It really speeds me up. All right, so now that our footage is in the timeline, what do we do? They have a ton of advanced shortcuts and stuff like that for Final Cut, but for the basics, all you really need to know is the blade tool and how to delete things and navigate your timeline. So with these tools, we can go through, cut out the parts we don't want, delete them, and then move on to the next thing. I actually adjusted my shortcuts a little bit, so I'm gonna put those on the screen. Um, some of the ones that come standard with Final Cut are just a little bit like weird for your hand to do. So I don't know if it's just my keyboard or if it's everybody, but I just simplified them a little bit. So in order to cut your footage, all you have to do is scroll your mouse over the part where you want to cut it, hit B, and it'll just chop it with the blade. That's it. Okay. And then if you want to delete the part before that or after that, you just need to hover over that or select it and then click delete. And this is where the magnetic timeline's cool. It'll just move everything to where it lines up nicely together. I also programmed it to where control plus B does what's called blade all. So that cuts every single level of audio, video, all at once. If you have multiple layers and you need to do that, that comes in handy a lot. One really cool thing about the magnetic timeline is that you can click the end of a clip and drag it to either 
either way, uh, the front or the back end, to extend the start or the end of the clip a little bit longer. And you can do that without messing anything up. Uh, it just kind of scoots it over for you without like overriding anything that's coming after it. Normally I would have to like zoom out and move everything after that clip over a little bit and then extend the clip and then hopefully not mess anything up <laughs> in the process. So I really like that. All right, so here's a cool feature if you are doing any slow motion B-roll or time lapses or anything like that, uh, changing your footage speeds is super easy. So all you have to do is select your clip and then use this shortcut command R and that will open up what's called retime control. And then you just drag the corner of the clip manually to either slow it down or speed it up to whatever percentage you want. Alternatively, you can use their menu system, click the time icon and either choose a preset speed or type in a custom speed here. And if you're into speed ramping, here's how to do that real quick. All you have to do is click Shift and B, click the end point, and then click Shift and B, click the out point. Then you can change the speed of that section to go either slower or faster, depending on what effect you're doing. And it'll automatically create a ramp from one speed to the next. Super easy. Be careful not to overdo this effect. I like to use it every now and then to add a little bit more action to slow motion B-roll at the start or at the end, or add a little bit more to my camera movements. All right, so for editing audio and music, you can go up to the music and sound effects tab where you can have all your music you regularly use and sound effects up there ready to go. You can put stuff there as kind of like a little go-to library kit and you just drag and drop it into your timeline just like the footage and it'll place it onto a new music layer which is really cool i like how it automatically organizes stuff for you like this it just it just keeps things clean and easy to work with so to change your volume on different types of audio all you have to do is hover your cursor over the audio layer waveform and drag it up or down to change the level to whatever you want so that's the bare basics, uh, all you have to do. If you need to use ducking to make it go from low volume to loud or back and forth, like in between talking points and stuff like that, it's super easy. All you have to do is hit keyboard shortcut R, which enables a feature called range. And once you hit R, you just need to highlight the area that you want to adjust, then drag that up or down, and it'll automatically transition smoothly between those volumes for you. Super easy. If you wanna see your decibels and stuff like that, all you have to do is click the audio meters icon, and it'll show up larger on your right-hand side of your screen. Always watch out to see if things are clipping, and if it does that, it's gonna turn red. So don't do that. <laughs> All right, now that we have our audio and our footage on our timeline cut up how you want it, you need to do some color grading. So we're gonna do the really, really simple version of color grading and all you have to do is go to the color inspector icon, top right of the screen, which opens up a drop down menu for your normal color grading effects. So just click that drop down and choose color wheels and from there, you can go in and adjust your temperature, your hue, your saturation, highlights, midtones, and shadows. And that's basically all you need to get started. I like to use my scopes, and if you're interested in seeing that, check out some of my other videos because it all basically applies to this program too. But basically, I go through and edit my footage to where the exposure is good, the color looks natural, and I have some nice contrast to where it looks good. Okay, I also like to go into the color curves option and add a little bit of an S curve because it adds a little bit more of a pop to your footage. So once you're done color grading and you have your audio levels ready, I like to use that as a starting point and copy it over to all similar clips. So like if it's talking footage or if it's B-roll or whatever. So here's how to do that. You just need to select your clip on the timeline and use the shortcut Command C. 
like normal to copy and then you click your footage that you want it to go to and to paste it you need to click shift command v and from there you can choose which things you're copying over if you don't want everything maybe okay and there's actually a faster shortcut for copying everything and that is using option command v which just paste everything all at once without having that menu pop up so it's a little bit faster if that's what you're doing okay so now you might want to add a title and in order to do that it's super easy all you need to do is click the title icon the top left there's a little T and find an animated title or a non animated title and just drag and drop that over your footage where you want it just like everything else and then after that you're just gonna adjust the text so go up to the top right and all the options for changing your fonts your text the size and all that stuff will be right there okay so also another cool thing is if your title is too long on your timeline all you have to do is click the end and drag it to be a little bit shorter and Final Cut will automatically readjust the animations and all that stuff to fit however however long you put it on your timeline for all right so now we need to just export it and we're done so the export buttons at the top right of the screen looks like your email sharing option icon and so just click that and for your exporting settings I like to just use the YouTube and Facebook preset so I just click that and it'll match up your export settings with the settings that you chose for your timeline so if it's 1080p or 4k just make sure that that is correct here then we'll click next choose where you want your exported file to go and then hit save and that's it if you want to see a progress bar while it's exporting just look at the top left in Final Cut and there's like a little ring that fills in and you'll notice it's pretty quick all right that's it for this one I know it's a ton of information to learn all at once but hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and let me know what questions you guys have in the comments for future videos and hopefully I can make some more tutorials in depth to help you guys with that type of stuff Anyways, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.